I don't know. There's something about the in-person. I'm stoked we're doing this because it's been yeah. a while for me. Yeah, it's it's also like just really funny how we're practically neighbors and it's like the first time I was like, I knew when it was between virtual and in-person, I was like, I think it's just best I do it in person because one, like I want to hang out too. And yeah. then on top of that, um, I don't know. These are just super cool to see. Like, I don't know if it's been done since then. I don't know. No, you're the first. Okay. You're the first Hell yeah. since the pandemic. It's crazy. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I'm so stoked to do this with you, man. And it's so funny. Do you get this like now that you're starting to get busier as an artist and you're taking, you're wearing a lot of hats, you're, and I can tell you're balancing a lot in your life right now as you're trying to grow your project. It is one of those things, even with someone like you and me, where it's like, you're my friend and I love seeing you and we always talk about hanging out. But the only time we've been able to make it happen is like when it's for something related to work. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those. Are, are you dealing with that more these days? Yeah, it's been, I think these past couple of weeks, it's been trying to find like a, a good balance of making sure like I have the time for myself and like my mental health and like my health and well-being on top of that making sure that I spend good quality time with my partner as we live together and then also balancing meetings with um, my team now and then not only that managing time for like the stuff that I need to get done whether that's for my day job and for music so it's a lot harder to find like to make to make time i guess what i'm trying to get at but then i'm trying to learn as i go along to figure out how to find a healthier balance to um spend that time with the people that i really want to spend time with do you find that whole process i mean is it is it stressful is it exciting that like oh all of a sudden like i have so much more to do like how are you finding it cuz it's I, I love talking to you about this stuff because it makes me think about when I went through similar stuff, but for me, I'm old, so it's a long time ago. So it's it's really interesting for me to like see it through your eyes or like somebody who is doing it for the first time. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, um, it's always cool and it's also stressful for sure. I think it's always exciting because I will share that with my partner and I'll tell her that like, oh, like this is all this cool stuff that's happening, but fuck, like <laughs> I need to make sure yeah. that <laughs> I have like time to, you know, do everything. And, um, it's, it's a, it's an exciting, a little nervous, but I also signed up for it. You know, I'm very grateful to, you know, from starting from ground zero and then now having, like emails and, you know, inquiries and stuff all the, the time coming in. It's something I never expected or, and now I'm like very grateful for it. You know, it's a good problem to have. It makes me think about uh, the way you put yourself out there on social media as well, because I think, and this is not unique to you necessarily, but it's like a lot of younger artists are showing the process a lot more like publicly. How do you find that as far as like being transparent about like, this is the level I'm at. This is where I'm trying to get to. These are the steps I'm doing it. And you're kind of showing people a lot of that as it's happening. And I that's a relatively new thing. Like it, it didn't really used to happen that way. Yeah, it's it's cool you bring that up because I've always felt like I haven't done that. I always felt like I had to kind of fit a certain mold or like do a certain layout or do a certain routine to kind of like engage and like grow a new following. And then I've noticed as time has gone on, I've been a little bit more creative and just finding happiness and how like kind of just like embracing the journey as it, as one would call it. And that's kind of like how I've been doing it. And you, you mentioned it and I've never really thought about it at all. I've just been having fun in front of a camera and now that's good. Yeah, I think, um, you know, if you were to tell me many years ago to be in front of a camera and just be awkward or do something silly or even just promoting things, I wouldn't do it. 
I still find like that little awkwardness in between when I do, but it's, I've realized as I've gotten older, I've become more comfortable with myself and not worrying about what other people think and enjoying that part of myself. So as I continue to grow this project, I also continue to know more and be like happier with who I am than before. Sure, sure. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's weird because it's, it is all performative sort of, right? Like you have to, you are sort of crafting a narrative around what you're doing, but you also want to make it authentic and comfortable to you. Like it can't be too sort of overwrought or it becomes like this fake, weird sort of reality TV thing. Yeah. But then also you do have to kind of craft it a little bit you know what i mean like making even from little things like making certain video editing choices or like you know what part of this do i want to emphasize i mean i'm kind of i'm speculating because i don't really do this like i'm so i've pulled back from social media a lot right now Mm -hmm. so it's interesting for me to see someone like you who i feel like is really putting yourself out there a lot right now and just uh Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting, man, because I'm glad to hear you say that you feel like it's a comfortable thing for you right now. or You're getting more comfortable. Am I right in saying that it doesn't feel like too much of an obligation at the moment? No. So, no, you're, you're right. It's at first it really felt like homework to me. And then now as I have kind of figured out I've gotten a lot of guidance like from friends and like helping me kind of figure out like the creative process and now with that help it's kind of given me another drive it's given me love to like figure out things again and like find love in the little things instead of making it seem like everything is a chore or an assignment if that makes sense yeah yeah Yeah. that absolutely makes sense I mean it's uh It's cool, man, because I I like to put it out there because I think a lot of times when I talk to people on this podcast, it's it's a lot of doom and gloom about like, God damn it, I hate having to do this. Like this is taking away from the music and the art that I want to make. And it's annoying that I can't just do the one thing. So it, it is really nice. And I fall into this, too, of kind of being defeatist about it. It's very nice to hear your perspective that, you know, there is some kind of balance out there that is achievable. And I mean, do you feel like you're still able to create as much as you need to? Like you can still find time to kind of not be the public facing thing to do the work that's going to fuel the rest of the machine, if that makes sense? Yeah, um, I think it was kind of nice to hear it from, you know, getting validation from friends to remind me that I, it's like, I don't have to worry as much. Like I have enough music for, I think like for the next three years, um, that it's, that's done. You you make a lot of shit, right? Like you can work pretty fast. Yeah. I, I would say like, I mean, I don't like on a good day, if it's like a good week, I could sometimes make like three to four. Yeah. That's good. And then, but then like there are days like, but like, I'm glad I, have those days, but then there are other days where I can't make stuff for like weeks. And then, yeah, yeah, but it like makes up for stuff. Um, But yeah, so I've been able to work on a lot of projects, but then I realized like, okay, like I have all of these things done, but now how do I promote it and do it in a way that is fun for me? And now that this past week, I've actually been trying something like pretty new and it was from the help of my like one friend. She does like a lot of creative direction for some people and she gave me like some really good insight and she goes, do this, do this. I think that you can really learn from these things. And then from there it's, she gave me like the stepping stones to help me find exactly what I wanted to do with being creative on the social media side that made me enjoy that again. Wait, can we be more specific about like what those steps are? Yeah. So, um, her name is Nyla. Shout out Nyla. Um, she did, she does like a lot of creative direction and she helps like with like web design and like graphic design. She probably, she wears a lot of hats. I, I, I hope I didn't get that wrong. But when I asked her like the questions of how, what am I doing here on this like artist page and 
what am I doing differently or what am I doing wrong? Or like, what are some things that you've noticed from an outsider's perspective? Someone that I'm cool with, but not doesn't necessarily like know, I guess like the whole paint picture right, that I'm right. trying to portray. And she goes, I think this stuff is cool. Like she was giving me insights on what was doing well on social media versus what was different um, versus trying new things out, trying some new ideas, taking inspiration from um, different artists and trying to co- incorporating that into myself. And that being said, so this week I was really obsessed. Like I love having disposables around and I finally wanted to use like stuff as cover art for, you know, stuff in the future or like, just to kind of clean things up. And Disposable cameras. Yeah, we're yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, like I started scanning things on my phone, putting it up on my like computer. And then from there started just like making a bunch of like edits. I just started using everything like from like I started using editing softwares via desktop. So now it kind of brought me back to when I was a kid, like video editing, skate videos when I was younger. And so I was like, damn, like this is so fun. And I'm just like kind of like finding old, like finding love in old things again. And so, yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. So when did you start skating? Because I we've talked about that you were a, a teenage skater. Yeah. So I think it was when I was nine, I want to say. Um, my dad like got me a GameCube and I started playing Tony Hawk's Underground. That was like the first one. Yeah. And then that was what really got me into skateboarding. Was that before or after uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2? Because I feel like 2 was the one I went crazy on. Yeah, it was after. Okay. I know that for sure. Just um, because I think Underground 1 and 2 um, progressed into like American Wasteland and uh, then progressed into like skate and okay. stuff. Yeah. 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 So a little after my Tony Hawk time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I got into that when I was nine. Um, so it was the video game that made you want to skate? Yeah. yeah I thought that's it, funny. Because um, when you unlock the tapes, you got like sponsor videos and stuff. And wait, what does that mean? So like they would have commercials, like they would have little commercials for whatever company that was working like with EA or whatever, or I don't know if I think it was EA, but, um, you could go into the options and like kind of view old videos and they would promote like old skate videos, which then exposed me to like, like audio footwear, like DC shoes and all of those skate videos. And then I started watching those because of Tony Hawk underground. And then I really just wanted to pursue like being a skateboarder, I guess. Man, that's interesting. That's such a, I never thought about that. That's such a cool way to go from sort of like the, the online to IRL pipeline. Yeah. Like I bet now hearing this, I'm like, I bet a lot of kids got interested the same way you did through, yeah. you know, you play the game, you already love the game, you unlock this content and then you start watching the videos of real life and it kind of, I don't know, maybe because you already love the game and play the game so much, it, you see the real life application and there's like kind of already that link made. It's like now it, I'm like, man, how do you, how do you do that for, for other art forms and other like disciplines, you know? Like, it's very true. I mean, if you think about it from like the DJ to producer pipeline, I've noticed like some people who start off like DJing and then realize like learning to make music, it's a lot harder than like it seems for and, sure. And oh yeah, it's two totally different skill sets. Exactly. And even when someone tries to show it in like a video and let's say there's I don't think there's like a video game for music production. I, they might be. There I don't is, know. Actually. There is. I, I've talked to at least a couple people who got started on uh, fuck, what's it called? There's there's an old one that like a few really well-known people now started on. I wish I could I think I'm going to name if I name people, I'm going to get it wrong. But I feel like it was like Imanu or somebody started on. Mm. Uh, it was like it was a video game for making music, kind of like Parappa the Rappa, but uh, not okay. not that you know something a little more advanced than that. It's like I think Beat was in the name Beat something. I can't remember, but it, it did exist, and that has happened in the past for oh, sure. Wow. Yeah. So, and then, it, like you said, from skateboarding to like from the video game 
to the IRL like thing. And then from, yeah, I, I really wonder if there's any other way that people have like found inspiration from well, wait, How did you get into music production? So <laughs> it's so funny. Um, so because of skateboarding, I then met my childhood best friend. Um, uh, we both like wore Etni shoes and like, that's how we connected. And then we skated together just growing up, like went to high school and everything. Um, he actually got me my first job as a skateboarding instructor, um, for college and, afterwards um you know just like being out in the summers for like eight like 10 hour days and stuff thursdays would be college night so we would go and there was just someone djing and i forgot his name but that dude was just absolutely crushing it and that got me into like wanting to know how to dj just so i could dj the college parties yeah. And that's how it all started. So how old were you then? I was about 22. I graduated. It took me, it took me some time to graduate. So, um, took me six years. So I was 22. So I was going into like my junior year or something like that. And that's when I really like discovered, uh, I really discovered like electronic music and stuff too. Interesting. Was it, uh, if you want to talk about it, was the taking a while to graduate, was it just an academics thing or were you kind of like in and out of school? Yeah. Um, you know, it took me some time. You know, I think when I left school the first time, um, I didn't really like grow up, you know? Yeah. And so um, went to school the first time, finished the year. Then I went to community college thought the same thing. I was like, Oh, you can just skip class, whatever. Took me a minute. Then I think that summer I really like got my head in the books and I realized like college wasn't as difficult as I thought it was from the help of my professors in community college got me to my other university and then I finished from there. So what was the, what was the key? Cause you know, obviously like we talked about a, a minute ago when it comes to production, you're very good at putting your head down, cranking out a bunch of material. So it's not it's not that you just can't, you know, apply yourself to a task. And I'm always curious because I think a lot of artistically minded people end up falling into the cracks of like the system of academia a lot. Was it like having the right professor who was able to sort of communicate in the right way? Was it or I, was it just time that, you know, you needed to mature a little bit? Was it something else? So yes, time. And then two, I remember I had to take like a math course and I am not good with numbers. Um, but after that, I realized that this professor, he really emphasized, he's like, just remember, like after every class, I always do like an hour break or like a two hour, like he has a two hour block. Um where you can just sit down and get all your work done. And like, and so he really like taught me a lot and he realized that it's always, he, I learned from him that it's okay to get help. Like it's okay to ask for help. And so he taught me a lot from that. And then I utilize that in all aspects in college and university. So when I realized I spent most of that time in that lecture hall or whatever in his, during his block periods, I did that in school as well, like in undergrad. Yeah. And I just would, I tried to do it a little bit outside. So I would be like in like a student center in like a study hall, but my professor's offices were like down, like a building next door. So if I needed help, I would just go to them. So that's, yeah. Is that, is that part of your personality too? Cause that's definitely part of mine of like having trouble asking for help. Yeah. I also just like, you know, growing up, it's been, you know, like sometimes it's hard to really voice things growing up, especially how I was raised. And so it's always, my mom had always had to do everything on her own. So that's kind of like how I like learned. So I had to figure shit out myself. And then yeah, was it just you and your mom the whole time pretty much when you were a kid? Yeah. So my mom raised me, but, uh, my dad was still in the picture. It was just like every now and then it, again, I would hang out with my dad. So my earlier years, I'd be there during the weekends. And then, you know, as I got older, it'd be like once a month and sure. But now I've gotten a lot closer with him now, I think like a couple of years ago. So sure, sure, sure. But that, that makes sense. Yeah. If you sort of see your mom, you know, carrying a heavy load, doing a lot of stuff on her own. I think as kids, like 
we learn so much just from observing. It's like, it's funny because I think when people become parents, they really worry about like, how do I tell my kids the right things to do? How do I sort of point them in the right direction? And I think the reality is so much that like, it's really just going to be how you live your life and how you like act in the moment every day because the kids are just watching you the whole time. Right. And they're just going to end up kind of acting like you, you Mm -hmm. know? Exactly. And so it was, you know, like my mom playing both roles um, at the time, you know, it was always a little bit, I wouldn't say difficult, but I had to learn like in certain ways. And then as I got older, I realized that some of my mom's practices were not the best. And then now like I tell her that now and she's okay with it. She's just like, Hey, like, you know, I'm not perfect. And, and yeah, I I mean, that's, we we're all, this is my theory. Anyway, I say this a lot is like, we're, the the best thing we can really aspire to as a human is like to be just like a little bit better than our parents were. Yeah. You know? And like, I think that's kind of what they did for their parents. And it's like, you know, but we do come from them, you know? So yeah, it's like, there's exactly. a lot of it in there. And I think that's fine. But yeah, it's, it's always one of those things where I'm like, eh, you can try a lot, but like, they're still going to be in there. <laughs> yeah. And no matter what, you know, I'm beyond grateful for having, you know, um, being uh, just growing up already and having both of them in the picture. Yeah. Um, so were I'm, they musical at all? Any music in the family? I know your grandpa was. Yeah. But. So my mom got me and like, I remember my mom would have this like Eva Ion, like Eva, I, I don't, I, if I butcher it, I'm so sorry, but she had the CD and that was like her jam. And she would listen to that all the time when we were on our way to work. Um, or, um, I think my dad gave me my first Walkman and uh, there was like a Ricky Martin CD that my mom had. Sick. And then my cousin, um, she burned a CD for my dad and that's, my dad was like, I don't know any of this stuff. So like, I think you might like it, which then introduced me to like Juvenile, like Juvenile, Terror Squad, Three Six Mafia, like that's what I got like into all of oh, that. Oh, that's so sick. I love that your your cousin burned Juvenile for your dad. Yeah, <laughs> there was so. It, oh my gosh, I <laughs> I remember it was a green CD. There was like Petey Pablo, Juvenile. Uh, I think like Mace. I think was his name. Um, oh yeah, Mace. Yeah, absolutely. and then yeah, and there was just so much. That's just G-unit. such a funny kid kid wants to connect with uncle thing of being like, what about all this filthy rap? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm sure this will do it. <laughs> this is what I'm listening to. So hopefully you dig it. <laughs> and it's funny because to tie that along with skateboarding, that kind of introduced me to like my first style of like figuring out my wardrobe. And as a kid, so I was definitely, I had my era where I was in like baggy pants and like oversized t-shirts and that was like me for a bit then i as i got older in high school i was wearing like skinny jeans and like again big t-shirts yep yep. and now here i am big (laughs) t-shirts so yeah nothing's changed his big t-shirts you've always been a pretty stylish guy man i feel like your style is like uh it's not crazy flashy, but it's just like kind of reserved and and interesting every time I see you. Yeah, I uh, I thank Caitlin for the the outfit for the headline show for sure. She was the one that picked it out. Oh, the little like mesh yeah, tank yeah. thing. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was fun, man. Speaking of uh, your your first headline show in DC, mm-hmm. that was really fun, man. To to come out and see you there, I, you know, from my perspective, like I came out met up with you before the show. And it was really cool for me to see you sort of with your whole friend group too. I'll explain what I mean. Even going into the show, like later on when you were DJing, we were all in the club, everyone's partying, having a great time. There was something about it the whole time. Like I was, I was watching you DJ. Obviously you had a great set. Room was packed. Everybody had a blast. But there was something about watching you DJ like you had you were smiling basically the whole time and it was this like very like wholesome kind of energy in the room if that makes sense like seeing you with your friend group everybody's super nice not a lot of not any sort of what i'm used to of like 
entourage, you know, there's always at least like one or two like sort of club demon people, you yeah. know, who are just in it for the party. There's always a wild person. It didn't, there wasn't really a wild man or a wild woman. It was just like a bunch of nice people really there to support their friend, a bunch of people who loved music. And even in the room when you were DJing, the people you didn't know, I, I don't know, it felt different to me than a lot of club nights I've been to in my life in kind of like a, just a cool homegrown way. I, I don't know the best way to describe it, but do you, do, does that, any of that make sense? Uh, yeah, no, it, it does. And thank you. Like that, the, that was super special. I honestly didn't expect it to go the way that it did. And I'm glad that it did. Um, do you want to, for people who weren't there and people who are, you know, newer to your whole thing, I mean, what what was the deal? We, I feel like we should set the stage Okay, a bit. so I will also be sharing some other stuff. But um, so basically the concept of this whole headline show was to debut an upcoming project um, that's coming out. It was supposed to come out in the fall. But that's then, the way it always and, goes. But then we decided to push it. And now it's set for next year. Um, so it was kind of like a taste of all of the new music that I've been doing for the past year and everything else moving forward. That's kind of like, it was kind of like saying goodbye to the old stuff that I used to make, which was like future bass and trap music, like future trap, I guess there's the, the, the blend, um, the melodic dubstep. And then I was shifting into this whole, like future house, like garage, like future, like future garage, I guess. Like people yeah, would two call step, it, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. And that was kind of like the, that's what we were whole, like that's what this whole concept was about. And that being said, um, you know, we had just a bunch of my friends, even like people that traveled, you know, I, I really wanted to not only curate a lineup of, you know, artists that I really enjoyed, but there were artists that I just felt super comfortable being with. I think it was just the the most special thing for me was at first, I really didn't know if I wanted to have a show that could just push tickets. And my friend who um, gave me some good creative knowledge was saying like, Christian, that's not you. Like you love curating. And I think that's how you should go about it. And that's kind of why I chose the lineup that I did. Um, I wanted to donate, you know, money to a good cause. I wanted to do something outside of just me, um, which... And sorry, where did the money go again? I know. Uh, it went me. to a, an organization called the Becoming Fund, uh, which is based in DC. It was a, an organization that helped drag artists and trans women and non-binary, all people within the LGBTQ community um, in efforts, in their efforts to medically or socially transition. And that's, I thought that was a good cause. I think everyone deserves to be who they are and express themselves in any way. Absolutely. And if there's any way that, um, that I can help or support, or if there's any organizations that are out there that can help support that cause, um, I'm happy to contribute. Yeah. That care, by the way, is also hard to get. It can be expensive. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's not yeah. an easy road. I did some research and there was a couple of people and I really wanted to do like a DC bound, like DC foundation. I could have donated to a large organization, but I really wanted to do something, um, from where it started, you know? Yeah. That's how it all, like... Where? What part of the area did you grow up in, by the way? So I I was born in Alexandria, and then I uh, moved out further into the suburbs. So okay. realistically, I was only 30 minutes away from D.C. Okay, yeah, yeah. But you've been you've been in the greater metro area the whole time. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've grown up here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited, but I'm also, like, you know, in this weird limbo where I, I think I'm looking for something new, too. So. Dude, I was wondering, it was something I was going to ask you later, too, because I feel like it it has to happen at some point. Mm -hmm. Like it had not because of you, but it happens to everybody at some point. Like, yeah, yeah. I think as I get older and I, you know, um, you know, beyond grateful for my parents and I've always wanted to be close to family. I think like as corny as it sounds, uh, like my partner and I like have really talked and I've never felt more okay with just kind of like 
getting out of here, you know? Yeah. And sometimes you can do it by yourself or sometimes it takes a certain person to really just like encourage you to maybe just broaden your horizons a little bit. And oh, I think it, that's, dude, it would yeah. be good, especially, you know, spending all your time living in one area like it would i i recommend that everybody moves somewhere right you know like it's good for everybody you can come back exactly if you don't like it if it doesn't work out whatever there's no nothing saying you can't come back but yeah it's so 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 healthy to live other places other areas of the country the world talk to different people you know, yeah all that absolutely kind of shit. it really helps and not only as a human but like as a creative too you know like it just broadens your perspectives across the board i support it man where <laughs> would you go la no i we talked about that she like does not like la and yeah. i've lived there or i haven't lived there but i was there for like almost three weeks and i need somewhere i could walk I I was fortunate to be in like the Silver Lake area, like Echo yeah, Park. Lake's like cool. it's yeah. oh yeah, it's super dope. Um, I was just like within like three quarters of a mile from Pirate Studios when I was working there like every day, and then I just as time went on, I just realized that it wasn't home to me. Yeah, yeah, it's like we're still figuring things out. Um, it's more so like, do we want to continue, like? Like we got, it's like finding a place for like the future, I guess. Um, but that's kind of, we'll get to that when we get to that, where <laughs> we still yeah. have plenty of time. Oh yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah. Sorry. Backtracking a little bit. On no, the, please, on the, please, on the, please. On the headline show. Yeah. That was basically it. I basically curated something from, I wanted it to be like a little bit more special. And so, um, Flash was actually the first venue I ever played at when I got into dance music. Okay. It was the first venue. What was that show? What was the uh, first show? I opened for Medicine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shout so, out to Medicine. Multiple podcast guest Medicine. Yeah. And um, the promotion company, New Androids, they gave me, they were the ones that gave me my first shot. And they were like, oh, do you know how to use CJs? I did not. And I just went to like Guitar Center and learned like the week prior. But they gave me my first shot. Um, Shout out to new androids, by the way. For, for sure. For yeah. anyone listening or watching to this who's outside of this area, if you ever come to this area, go to their shows. Absolutely. And go to any of the shows, like from all promoters. They're all really great. Oh, and, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sing singling them out. Oh, no, but, you know, no. Yeah. New, I, I know them and like they yeah. put on great shit. And, yeah. they're, they're, and they're also really phenomenal people. So I'm very thankful for them. Um, but yeah, they gave me my first shot and I... My whole, like, I think I was planning this for like two years. I really wanted to do something back in DC and I wanted to do it at Flash. And uh, my friend who uh, helped me organize that from the back end, uh, he really was like, he pitched the idea to, I guess, the owner and the owner was super down for it. Um, and so that's kind of like how it all went down. And it was the craziest 10 weeks to plan and the fastest time that, like from start to finish was, it felt like it flew by. Yeah. Like crazy. Well, and it's cool too, because you, maybe this is a little inside baseball, but I mean, you were doing most of this on your own, right? Because I think when a lot of people see an artist, you know, debut headline and they're really pushing it on their socials and it's kind of being put out as this big thing, oftentimes that's like, a very planned out thing from their agent, their manager that's been in the works. You know, they've been like, next year we'll do your debut headline. It's been this long planned out thing by a large team of people. And yours, not that planning didn't go into it, but it's like, I think this is part of why it felt cool to me was you could tell that there was a DIY thing going on yeah. to a certain extent. No, absolutely. Um, I got a, I got some help. So, you know, I had, you know, I have a friend that really helped me giving me marketing advice and doing all of that. I had my friend David who also helped co-promote it. Um, he's based in Charlotte. So he uh, helped with the artwork and all of that. And my friend Luca who took the photo in general and, um, you know, with the curation and the budget, you know, that was really tough. And that was all like on my back end and spending. Dude, so, it's, it's, and what I love about what you're saying is you you had a cool idea and you did it with your friends. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that is, that's where all cool culture starts is just <laughs> like somebody has an idea, they work with it on, or they work with their friends on it. 
and it becomes something like that's ideally that's what everything should be culturally you know yeah. it's like it, that it can't work that way because we all need to make money but like that's all, all cool shit starts that way so anyway that's just my little rant about that no absolutely and uh my manager even said it like even um she goes it's the coolest thing about you know when you see all these touring packages and stuff like a little bit more behind the scenes she goes 90 percent of the time or more i could be wrong but most of the people that you see on your lineups is just people like that just really fuck with everyone else and it's just putting a lineup or a festival with your friends and that's like the coolest thing ever yeah 100 percent. i mean and to take that into like the macro perspective all, there's a lot of discourse about how you know sort of every big festival is kind of the same lineup now and like a lot of festival lineups are getting boring because you see a lot of the same big names on every bill and it, it's that kind of thing where it stands out more when someone makes the opposite choice not that you know your show is the same as like a i don't know ultra music festival or whatever but it's anytime someone does make that choice to be like no, no, these are just people I fuck with. These are people who are doing cool stuff. Like, to me, I find that much more attractive these days of like, oh, well, I like this person who's putting together this show. So I'm, I'll probably like all these people who I may not know right. rather than just sort of being like, oh, five names I've seen a hundred times before, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah, sure. I'm not doing anything else. Like yeah. that to me is much <laughs> less exciting. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was fun, fun night overall. Um, I want to do it again. I don't know when, but we're working on that. So yeah. It was great, man. Seeing you up there, just, I don't know, you looked very happy while you were doing it. And I think it was one of those things where whether you were aware of that or not, it was, I think you as a performer put everyone else in the space of, you know, just kind of chill and happy and enjoying the night. You sort of set the tone is, I guess, what I'm saying. When you brought it up, like this wholesome moment or something, um, it's interesting because I think it was just showcasing something that I really loved doing and seeing everyone really like love it, which was really fucking cool. Um, That's huge also too. Because brought... you had made this pivot, not to cut you up, but you had made this pivot, right? Of like now you're you're making a different kind of music than what you had started with. And don't let me put words in your mouth, but I think that can be a scary thing when, you know, you feel like, oh, well, this thing I was doing already got some momentum. And am I like throwing something away that I've spent time on if I switch directions right now? And so, yeah, I could see how getting sort of that immediate validation of like, oh, no, people like this, too. That's yeah. a nice feeling. And that was huge. It, it, it And you make a really great point is every year, I think, from the moment things were start where I started to get noticed, I guess, I was always nervous of how I was going to top that year. How was I going to do something better than next year, the following from winning like the Discovery Project? Actually, no, even backtracking releasing on Subsidia, that record being really like strong and then winning the Discovery Project and playing Beyond Wonderland. And I was like, how am I going to beat that? And being able to travel doing this like future trap sound. And then I completely switched everything out. And I was like, I only want to do this moving forward. Um, really, it really scared me. It really put me in like a weird bubble for a while. And then I realized that I just, in order for me to um, get over that, I had to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that really pushed things to uh, like a whole new level, I guess. What was the what was the thought or the start of you deciding to change directions musically? So back to New Androids, um, they had Salute uh, play in 2022, I want to say. I went to a show very last minute. I think, uh, yeah, I just got like a ticket out of the blue because a friend of mine, um, she saw them in she saw them in New York City um, the night before, and she told me, "You have to see them. They're phenomenal." And I went. I saw them perform and that was the first time where I had really found music that I just enjoyed from start to finish. It put the biggest smile on my face and 
I didn't know music like that existed. Um, and that opened my eyes and I was like, that's what I want to do. And I've been working on stuff like that, but I didn't know people would like it. So it was kind of sitting on the back end for a while. And then that's when like things like kind of went, like I went gun ho on it. Right. That makes sense. I mean, yeah. Shout out to Salute. Salute's amazing. I, and it's funny because I think Salute has turned kind of a whole new generation onto those sounds. Yeah. In a weird way, uh, for whatever. I mean, Salute's great, but like they have become sort of the one of very few that I think is sort of carrying a torch for yeah. that sound for a new generation. It's very interesting. But it's cool to to me too, because you and I have talked and I, I sent you music here and there of like, oh, if you like this, then maybe you'll like that. And it's it's always interesting for me to see like your context for it. Because like you said, you know, before Salute, maybe you weren't as familiar with that music, but now the music you're making, it, to me, like could have fooled me that you didn't know all the, you know, years and decades of history before it. Cause like, I don't know, man, I, I was listening to even like the Astray EP, your new mm -hmm. one that you have on Bitbird and a couple of the tracks on there. I mean, it's to me, I can like draw these direct lines to like, you know, early 2000s, like garage and two-step songs, you know, it's like in the rhythms and the drum sounds and all that. But you don't know those songs. Like it's just fascinating to me how that works. No, uh, I, I, I didn't. It was. Uh, I think when I just heard, like, garage at that time, I didn't really know. Like, I just wanted to say, like, it's like I didn't want to say that. I was like, oh, like I am like making UK garage because. You know, sometimes you say that and then people are like, what the, like, this isn't it. Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. And so when I started making stuff like this, I didn't realize that there was some like, I don't know, there was like some swagger to it. And I didn't realize that until I think I saw more people like from the UK and people reaching out to me like via messages or like XYZ emails. That's when people were like, like, wow, like we really, we want you here. Like we want you here. And I didn't know that. And I, I think that's just fucking sick. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I mean, is it the kind of thing you've always been a great producer since the day I've known you? But I mean, listening to that Astray EP, I listened again last night to sort of refresh myself. And I mean, the the production level just technically is really high. Like, that's a really <laughs> good record, man. Do you feel like your production abilities sort of leveled up around the same time you made this like stylistic change um yes and no um so 2019 i gotta go back um shout out my friend alec he i did a pr couple production lessons with him and he gave me this ableton template basically i when i was making music i just had no direction i just a blank template all the time right and then now when i use this template everything's processed in a certain way my drums at least um and that really just kind of, once I learned how all of those things worked, that's when everything started just clicking. And that's where my production started getting a lot better, not only in like that future trap sound, but when, like you said, when I made that switch to house music, I knew how, like I, I needed to like relearn how house music was made because, you know, Trap kicks are so different than yeah. like house yeah, kicks, yeah, yeah. and you process them yeah, differently. Exactly, they, they sit differently in the mix, all that. Yeah, yeah. And so, with that being said, having that little happy mix of both was really cool. So, it. I think when I made that EP, it was just a bunch of happy accidents, and then also, like like just relearning everything again like that's all it was you know you're gonna get a bunch of people asking you for that template now <laughs> yeah and i mean with it sign up for my production tutorials and there, there you go, go there and you get go. it that's it that's it you just you are you doing it. a lot of those these days the tutorials i've done a few so it's uh, it, i will rightfully say full disclosure is that i am no i am by no means like a scientist when it comes to music production. I don't know what I'm doing half the time. Um, but 
I guess when it comes to the creative process, it's just a bunch of throwing ideas at the wall and seeing what works and what doesn't. I give and take as I go. And that's always been my creative that's been like my mantra is get the idea out, worry about the rest later. We need a lot of people teaching production in different ways. Kind of like what we were talking about earlier with like your professors in college too, of like there are people out there who do need the scientists to show them how to do the like crazy sound design, you know, stuff. But then there are other creatives who don't connect with that, who would maybe connect with what you're talking about of like, this is just the best way to get the ideas out of your head onto the page. And I, I think that's just as valid. And there's, I mean, there's very famous, successful musicians who have no idea, you know, technically what they're doing. Yeah. Like that is a real thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's, it's fun to just kind of understand um, or get a, like, once I learn a, a couple of new things, then I'm like, whoa, I could do this with that all right, I'm going to make a song out of just learning those two things. And that's, yeah, well, and that's yeah. fun too, which is another, uh, I always try to bring it back to fun on these pods because it's like, at the end of the day, that's what's most important is you have to find the way that making music becomes fun for right. you. If you lose that, it doesn't matter how good you are at it. You mm -hmm. know? I agree. And there's like, you know, after seeing a few videos, you know, sometimes there's like methods and like strategies to like kind of become that next big thing or, um, you know, upping your production in any, in like any way, shape or form. I just have now kind of become numb to it where if it's not fun for me, then I just step away because at the end, like you said, at the end of the day, if you're not having fun, then what's the point of it? Go do something that makes more money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, what is, I mean, for you right now, like, do you think about what success is to you? Do you think, I'm sure you have, you know, obvious like goals and benchmarks you'd love to hit, but like, what is what do you want out of this right now? And has that changed over time? I think what I wanted was to just showcase music to people and impact it and impact someone in some way, shape or form. Um, I think I became successful, I think, four years ago, five years ago, when I started putting out music independently and doing all of that, because at that time... You know, I just felt like I was able to tell a story and resonate with someone in some way without meeting them for the first time, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, the rest is just, you know, like, it's like the cherry, it's like an extra or whatever, like the cherry on top or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've been very blessed. I think I would say success comes from the people that I met and the people that I will call like my very close friends in the, in the future, you know, or like now and forever. Um, I've met some of my favorite people because of what I do. Um, and the touring and all of that, it's brought me such great experiences that I would consider myself a workhorse and I don't take a lot of time off. And so when I travel, it's like, holy shit, like I'm still working, but like, this is, such a cool experience. Like going on going on my first tour with Rekno um, was such a blessing in disguise. Or like such a, not even in disguise, such a blessing because I got to travel with all of my friends and that was such a cool thing. Where did you, that was like your first tour tour? That was my first multi-city tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where'd you, where'd you hit up? What stands out? Uh, oh man, every city was... Like it doesn't have to be, this is not the what's the craziest thing that happened on tour yeah. question. This is more just like, what do you think about when you think about that tour? Um, I think just lifelong friendships. I think of that. Um, also just such such a like in ah what's the term embracing everything or just like enjoying the enjoying the grind i guess um for those that may not know touring is expensive and also the return on touring isn't always the best especially not if you're second or third on the bill yeah yeah and um it covered you know i was able to get the media that i needed i got you know 
I got my I got my flights, you know, everything was special. Getting um, media for for anyone who doesn't know, media is like, you know, somebody to come take photos and videos during your set, that kind of thing, which is another expense. You got to source those people in every city, food, hotels and all of that yeah. and I was so blessed that I had a network of people that were very kind enough to let me stay with them and such and so forth. So we went to Denver, Oakland, Vancouver, um, and Atlanta. And it was such a overall, just an, of such a great experience. And all those are all, that's a good four cities because those are all very different cities. Yeah. Yeah. Like the vibe in each of those cities is very different. So different. Yeah. To go back to your question on success, I think it yeah. just has... It's been, I think everything else has just been like a, like an add on, you know, having a manager that, um, really believes and really is really passionate on it. I didn't expect it. I didn't expect to have a manager, to be honest, when I started this thing to have an agent, like I didn't expect that either. And that's always just, I don't know. It's, it's cool when you have just like your team is like, you're really good friends. And that's how it should be. Yeah. Man. And it's, it's just cool because like you're still, you have been doing this for a long time, but also you're still just starting in a way. Like there's a lot of road in front of you. And I, I hope you know that the fact that you have realized kind of the what's important and like the real success, because you're spot on with that answer. A lot of people don't figure that shit out till way, way, way later. Like that's, that's going to serve you really well to just be able to be happy about the stuff you've already done and the fact that you're here doing it at all, right? Like yeah. that, I, I think sometimes just because doing this as a career is hard and you have to be thinking about a lot of things and you have to always sort of be pushing the ball forward. It is easy to forget. I'm not like talking down about anyone. It is easy to forget sometimes that it's just like, we are doing like kind of a crazy cool thing. Like it's cool that we're doing this at all. Mm -hmm. I could give this up tomorrow and um, and just tell my future kid or kids, uh, whatever, you know. And it's just a record to show that like you can really do anything you set your mind to. Yeah. I didn't start, in, I didn't start making music till way later. I think I was 22. And then now usually... It takes a while, but you know, I'm now grateful to have gotten the opportunity to meet so many people and travel. It's such a blessing. So I want to be able to share that story. I don't know. I, I think that's the best attitude because to me, that almost ensures that you'll be able to do this longer than somebody who's like desperate for, you know, the next goal and like just lives or dies, like has tied their whole self worth to it. I think it means you'll be able to do it longer. Uh, do, does Ableton know you have that tattoo? No. You, there's... Oh yeah, this one? Yeah. yeah to, <laughs> to totally switch up the vibe of what we were just talking about, you should monetize that tattoo. <laughs> yeah. I, you need to get sponsored. I need to, I'll talk to my buddy. He, I think he does like, he like works with Ableton a lot. I could just be like, hey, if I have this tattoo on my body, can I get like a free upgrade you dude you absolutely at a minimum <laughs> deserve a free upgrade <laughs> hell yeah I'll, i'm gonna do that for real because I, I mean you give production tutorials and yeah you got them tatted i mean yeah they gotta there's not that many people that have that i wonder if Riff Raff got anything you know how he has that big uh like mtv tattoo on his neck yeah i wonder if he ever got anything from mtv for that uh, wasn't he on MTV? He was on a reality show. Was that... Was it Love and Hip Hop? I think oh, it was. Or was it... No, it wasn't Love and Hip Hop. It was like, um, not Real World, but like one of the ones after Real World. I think it was more of like a life reality kind of thing. Yeah. I can't remember. It was now. based in Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I think that's where he's from. That's a good point, though. Maybe he got on the reality show because he tatted their <laughs> logo. <laughs> yeah. There's also his persona was pretty like great too. I mean, he's I, I've I've shared a I've told this story a million times, but I mean I've shared a hotel room with Riff Raff. I've DJed for Riff Raff. Like I don't he's not I wouldn't call him a friend, but I know him a little bit. He is actually like that. That is his really? real personality. There's no, like, <laughs> he's not really putting out a show. Like he is, a, he's smart and he's funny and he knows what he's doing, but that is his personality. A hundred percent. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. He's a, he's a complete maniac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think I've met anyone like, 
of, I don't know, Riff Raff's pretty big of that stature. Well, he's just a one of one. Yeah. I don't even know who is who else is really even in competition for whatever position he's in. Right. <laughs> I yeah. I still I still am like when it comes to meeting famous people. I think at the end of the day, it's always like they're people in the end. But I still get that little moment of like starstruck, like being starstruck. Yeah. You know. Well, some people, especially like mega famous people, they almost have that air around them. And I think when they're mega famous, everyone else in the room is also kind of having that moment. So it's like kind of this group reaction that's happening. Yeah. Even even if you all know that it's just another normal person, it's kind of happening to everybody. And so it sort of heightens that feeling, you know? Absolutely. I like, well, to share a story, I guess my first night of the tour with Rekno was in Denver. And I was doing something uh, like a remix for Closey. And she and I ended up just becoming friends and wanted just like to hang and get dinner. And I know Closey's very big. Like I know she's very well known in the space. And to see like when we went out to eat, people like I think it was like the employee, like the people that were working were really like excited. Oh, uh, that's and we cool. got like a photo with them and like we got a photo with everyone. It was really cool. But I was like, wow. And I thought to myself, if I ever got to that, I feel like I'd be overwhelmed. But it's also like, I'm sure she's also overwhelmed, but I'm also just, you know, as we get, as we get further along, you know, it kind of, I guess it comes with the territory, Yeah, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it comes with the territory. I mean, I think you got to, you know, set boundaries and figure out how to take care of yourself in that. But yeah, I don't know. It's celebrity culture. Like people are just drawn to that for better or for worse. I mean, for you, I think we've talked about this a little but like. There's there's some social anxiety stuff too, right? That you've kind of had to figure out as you're getting more out into like the public sphere. Yeah, I still like <laughs> I'm all, like I always my friends know me and they know like when I tell them I'm socially anxious, they don't believe it because I'm just so open and honest with them all the time or I can just talk hide for it too. yeah, like, like talk not for intentionally, miles. but yeah. But you don't show it, you know? Yeah, yeah. But then when I'm at a show and I meet somebody, even if it's just like a random person and they have no idea who I am, it takes all, I have a lot of discomfort. Um, and if I meet someone that's like really excited to meet my project, um, I get a little overwhelmed and uh, it's not because of anything they're doing. I think it's just how I, handle anxiety because as a kid I was always like the I was like I wouldn't say the nerd but I, I would say yeah fuck it like I was the nerdy guy in the group <laughs> yeah and I just never was it really like an athletic group because I know you used to be like a you know sports dude to a certain like or at least a running dude to be honest I think I joined sports to make to like try to be popular sure and then I realized that like I still hung out with the same like six people yeah, yeah. and I think it didn't take me until I graduated college to like really understand that like you really just wanted to try to fit in and then um yeah so that that still kind of follows me so where there's like people that really want to get to know me and stuff I still get really reserved because I just picture the same like kid that like no one really cared to know or like really wanted to know and so that's where like it kind of like trickles in. And so, but I'm always super grateful no matter what, like I'm always like, I can even just say like, dude, I'm so thankful and like whatever. And then, but I still have that anxiety. So it's fine. It's something I got to work with, <laughs> with my therapist, you know? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. I mean, being conscious of it, being aware of it in the moment, I think is probably the most important thing of just, you know, knowing you have it, acknowledging it and kind of, letting it happen if it's bad one day it's bad one day you know yeah and i think what even makes me anxious is that you know meeting people like um you know other artists and stuff i sometimes get anxious i'm like i hope i don't talk too much <laughs> I, hope, I hope i'm asking questions like i hope it's not about me well i mean come on so many artists have social anxiety i know more awkward djs than i know like smooth cool djs you know what i mean <laughs> right <laughs> No, absolutely. You know, and I think it's, you kind of meet more of them as you get to know them. 
Oh, absolutely. And even the people you thought were like the cool ones, you talk to them when they're not on stage. And it's like, oh, no, you're just an awkward person, too. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. Me yeah. too. Yeah. I, I mean, to me, the only time I like feel really like I'm a cool person is when I'm up there DJing. Yeah. You know, which is cool because then you get to sort of have that experience and take on that aspect of your personality. But then, yeah, otherwise, it's like, oh, no, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah, in reality, we're all a little, you know, like, uh, in friendly terms, a little geeky because we're all on a computer and like, oh, yeah, making music. It's and so one of the nerdiest things you could do yeah. <laughs> in art. You yeah. Know? <laughs> on that note, this is a broad question, but, you know, we were talking about like meeting someone, maybe they're different from what you expected. As you've gotten more successful and you're getting busier, you're playing more shows out of town releasing records with, you know, big labels, that sort of thing. Is there any part of this that has been significantly different from what you expected it to be when you were starting off and kind of just hoping to get to the point you're at now? Uh, can you like elaborate on that? Like when you were younger and just trying to get in, trying to get your foothold anywhere, did you have an expectation for what it would be like? once you got there that was then like, has anything about this been surprising to you or different from what you expected? I think like when it comes to the show aspect, I guess, you know, when people really just, you know, you communicate with people and then, you know, everyone's like, Oh, like here's this assortment of stuff that you asked for. And like that type of treatment is really cool. It's really dope. And then there's also the, um, what can I say? Like, the also other side where, you know, they, you don't really get anything and you, and it's fine. And I think I like both sides because I remind myself, it's like, oh, like there's a sweet like deal that comes with this. And, you know, like there's perks that, you know, I have water and like drinks for my friends or myself. And then there's other times where it's like, you're not there yet. And that's fine. It's humbling. And you, you just have to work harder and one day you'll get there. And that's cool. When it comes to labels, it's so interesting when there's so many people like that are all just invested in your project now. And that's been the super surprising thing because it's not just you and two other people that believe in you. Now there's like a whole different company that is working with you. And um, I don't want to name the label that I'm working with on this next project, but it is a big label. And so having to, you know, them having meetings with my team and discussing creative direction. And then they are getting me like songwriter or they're giving me singers and songwriters. And it's, I'm like, what the fuck is going on, man? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Dude, I'm just like, it's like, I'm just like a one man show in my house. Right. And now, so that's, that's the cool, that's the surprising part. Yeah. 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 Seeing like how big the machine can get and like, is starting to realize how some of these really famous artists, like what their everyday life must be like to sort of maintain that. But what's funny about what you said earlier about when you tour and sometimes you go in and they've gotten everything on your rider and they're like so deferential and treating you like royalty. And then other times it's the total opposite and they, you get treated like a second class citizen. And to me, What's fun about that is when you get the treatment, it's great because that's just fun to, you know, have people provide for your every need. That's nice. But when you don't, too, it, it sort of shows you how, like, not fake, but like just that it's all sort of made up the like hierarchy of like artists and who is important and who's not. And to me, it too, shows you how the business works of like, you can be the hottest thing one day, the next day, nobody can care about you. The day after that, you can be back in business. And it's it's mirroring the highs and lows of like being an artist in general. Yeah, You know what I mean? We're like, yeah, some days you will get the cheese tray and you will get a, a bottle for your friends free of charge. And then other days like, the bouncer won't let you in the club, even though you're playing that night, you know, it's like, <laughs> and that's like kind of a metaphor for being an artist in general. I think. Right. Yeah. It's like all of that shit. It's like what you were saying earlier, all of that is sort of the window dressing and you can't get too caught up with it mm -hmm. either way. 
it's like enjoy it when it's nice don't worry about it when it's not nice but it's all that kind of stuff it's another thing i think people get caught up in where it's like oh none of that matters at all absolutely and i think it's i've taken it into account from other touring friends as well you know they're like you know one day they're you know traveling all over and then one day their flight gets delayed three times but at the end of the day as shitty as it is you just have to remember like why you even got like how you got there and why you're even doing this so it's it's super nice. Oh, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned earlier um, that you had won uh, the Discovery Project uh, competition, Insomniac's thing, for people who don't know, like a competition they do every year where you can, as an up-and-coming artist, submit music to them. Someone picks, you know, a winner out of yeah. that. And the winner of that gets to play at a big Insomniac event. I always go back and forth with like, are competitions worthwhile for up and coming artists like remix competitions, you know, performance competitions, that sort of thing. But it seems like in this case for you, like, what was that experience? Do you think it, obviously it's a cool thing to get to do. Did it change things? Like did winning it change anything for you? I think when I tell anyone uh, to like, on the grand scheme of it or like the big, the grand scheme of things and the big picture is I would always tell everyone to just enter the competition because the worst thing that happens is you don't get picked. And so when things I would say shifted, I think I would say yes, because from there I was able to maintain the relationship with Insomniac. And not only did I release on one of their labels, the Discovery Project label, I was able to go back and present even more work to them. And if they liked it, you know, we could continue the relationship. And if not, you know, I'd pitch stuff in, in the future. Um, but yeah, um, they seem to like it. They put out my first, like my EP um, this year as well. Uh, they really helped out with a lot of things. Um, they also gave me like remix opportunities. They've given me a couple of shows out of it too. Um, you know, Beyond Wonderland, I just played in June. So I would say it definitely was a big pivot. And I think it also, I, I don't know, I guess for in my terms, I would say it shifted things to let, let myself know from a personal standpoint that there is something special here. And there was always something special to begin with. But now like this is like, the real fucking deal, I guess. And this is where you can go all in and make sure like, I don't know, I don't know, assure yourself that this is something that you really want, that I really wanted to do. Yeah. 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 I mean, getting that kind of validation is huge. I talk about that with a lot of people where it's like, when you're just starting off, all you really need is like one person or one entity to give you that kind of approval, just to be like, no, you're not crazy. Like, you are good at the, you you belong here kind of thing. Because it's it sounds so simple, but when you're just starting off, like you really don't know, you know? Yeah. Unless you're like one of the, you know, one in a million are the people insane enough to be like, everyone needs to listen to what I yeah. think, you know? And that can work too, but like you have to you be a specific kind of crazy person for that to work. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, for the rest of us, man, you really need that little, just a little bit of validation can go such a long way. And it was cool because having Blossom as the guest judge for that one, um, I didn't know who she was. Oh, I didn't know she was. Yeah. Man, I love Blossom. I well, sorry. I knew her project. I just didn't know her like in general. Yeah, yeah. And normally, I think I've seen her. She does like a lot of drum and bass and like bass house and stuff like that. And what I was selected was so far left field from what she normally plays out. And the, um, there's a video about it, and she talked about how the production was good and X Y Z. And you know, a lot of people seem to like it, and that's what got me there. So, you know, big shout out to her. And big shout outs to everyone at Insomniac who has believed in the project since. Um, it's been really nice to work with them uh, for the past couple of years. So, yeah. Yeah. More to come, man. I'm, I'm stoked. I mean, obviously, we alluded to the fact that you have sort of a, a big project coming up that you're planning for next year. And I know from talking to you separately, it's been in the works for a long time. But 
Is there anything else we should say about just like where your head's at, what you're doing musically, any, you know, without revealing anything you don't want to reveal kind of where, where you're headed musically? I think, um, just, I think I use, I've, everyone, I've had mantras before. I've had like sayings where this whole like ethereal dance music and like, that's where I'm moving forward with like, the rest of the way but also i think the term in motion that i did this year is really what i'm like striving for is that there is just no matter what happens in life there's always something moving and you either just go at it head on or you stop and i just don't see that for myself right now um so really without saying too much i think the next year is literally some of my favorite work that I've ever done is now finally like happening and coming to life. So that's just that. That's nice. Yeah. 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 And I can tell, I mean, I know you are, but like even just right now, it's like, I can hear the excitement from you about it. And that's fun. Cause that, you know, that gets me more excited about it too. I'm like, Oh, he's having fun. I want to have fun. You know, that <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. You have a very good way of like, branding like the in motion and ethereal dance music like if anybody else said that to me i'd be like fuck off like that's <laughs> <laughs> but but for you it's what you were saying earlier we started off talking about like the way you are on social media and how it's kind of just you feeling comfortable with the way you put yourself out there and even when I think about that headline show at Flash, like I was like, yeah, that was kind of ethereal. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's actually it's it's accurate. You know what I mean? So it's there's I don't know. Branding is such a weird science too, because for you it works. I don't think it would work for any. I would be annoyed if anyone else did it. You know? <laughs> Fair, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like right. sometimes you you see somebody like pushing a, a brand or a term or a phrase, and you're just like. I don't know, man. This feels weird. Yeah. And you're just like, you good, man? Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, dude, I mean, is there anything else uh, on your mind? Anything else we should talk about before we wrap it up here? I don't know. I think at the end, I just want to say thank you to having me on your podcast. I mean, this is, I I think I told you, it was like, I, it's been I think in 2020, I would go on my walks and this was like the first thing I found. And it's been, it was always on something. I was like, oh, maybe one day, like I'll get on it. And it was, yeah. you know, now here we are. It, honestly, you should have been on it way earlier. <laughs> and then, I don't know, man, when I asked you to do it like a few weeks back, the second I did, I was like, wait, why didn't I do this a long time ago? So it's it's been in the works, man. I've always wanted to have you on here. So massive thank you. And um, I guess a massive thank you to everyone who really supports this from the artists, from the artists that I work with, the artists that I'm friends with, to the fans that I've made, to the friends that I've made, and uh, my family who always has been very excited about it too. Um, yeah, thank you to everyone. And yeah, I don't know. No, that's, 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 that's so it. sweet, man. Yeah, I, yeah, 100%. Do you feel like, did we get enough of like an interview in there? Because it's like, you're my friend, so I just get excited to talk to you. Do we do we get out what we need to get out about like you as the artist? Yeah, I think so. I mean- okay. And if we haven't, you know, there's, you, you can know, do a you part can, two. exactly. Maybe a part two. Yeah. We should definitely do that. <laughs> Let's <fun>. do it. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks, dude. I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Hell yeah. Peace y'all.